I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Hey, Marissa. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing wonderful. Oh, wonderful. It's, you know, and because, because if you think about it, it's a choice, mm -hmm. right? We're either, we, you know, we can't change any of the situations in our life. All we can change is how we view them. But, but mm -hmm. actually, even all the situations in my life are great right now. But we just have to choose to be wonderful. Yeah, I like that. And today, we're going to talk about how we can make sure we continually feel wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with imported herbs <laughs> or illegal anything. So, which we are not encouraging by any means. I have never, ever even come close to that. Although I can say, I think some of the times when I walked out of my high school, I probably walked through some fog of things. But anyways. <laughs> Growing up when you did, I'm sure that's accurate. <laughs> yeah, Going going to high school in the late 70s, there were all kinds of things that, that happened. <laughs> but today we're talking about, well, last week we talked about, in, you know, are we an inspiration point? Right. Uh, are we an encouragement to our to our team, our coworkers, our, our friends, our family? And today we're going to talk about reverse inspiration. And, and, and the way I introduced this topic in my blog post that went out this morning was that I recounted when, when my kids were little, um, we had this, we actually did it with a couple different older widows in our church, but there was one widow in particular. She was a, a German woman uh, who had come through World War II, had a really, really hard young part of her life. But she was a widow, and, and once a month, usually on a Tuesday evening, several families from the church, we would all just go to her. She had a very little house, tiny house down in the valley in Syracuse, and we would sing for her. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, to be completely honest, it was the last thing I wanted to do when I got home from work. You know, work was busy. The kids are running all over the place. So we're rushing through dinner. You know, maybe it's quick. Give them baths before we leave in case they fall asleep on the ride back home and that type of thing. And I'm like, ah, oh, not again. We have to go and do this. Mm -hmm. So people would say, so why did you go? Well, you know, I wanted to be uh, uh, my commitment to my faith community uh, I wanted to be a good example to my kids and show them this is, you know, you don't live your life for yourself, you live it for other people. But the remarkable thing would happen that we would go, and within about 15 minutes of me being in her house, my whole mindset would shift. And, and I would just be super positive. Um, coming home, you know, the songs were still going through my mind. The kids just seemed to be behaving better, and I'm sure they weren't. It was just the it's fact that the, I was your viewing perspective, things differently. Yeah. Yeah. My whole perspective changed. And I've thought about that a lot over the years. And in 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 one way, you know, I viewed it as well, this was the blessing of doing something good. And that is true. Mm -hmm. But the way the blessing came was through literally serotonin and dopamine being released in my brain because I was doing things for other people. Right. And that's the the key focus about this reverse inspiration. When we work to help others, our brains react to that. And it's actually known as a helper's high. And mm -hmm. if you know, anybody can Google that, helper's high, it, it's amazing. It, and, and the health benefits, I mean, there's so many things that, that the benefits that we get just from doing nice things for people. Um, I, I jotted a couple of them down here. Uh, for people who are 55 and up, who volunteer, they have a 44% lower likelihood of dying. Now, let's face it, all of us have a 100% likelihood of dying. However, these folks live longer. Mm -hmm. And the impact of volunteering is greater than if they would exercise four days a week. Wow. So they get, so the percentage, the, their life's being extended is greater than if they exercised four times a week simply by volunteering. There's less incidence of depression. There's less hypertension. Everything just starts to improve when we do things for others and we encourage and inspire other people. And it's, it's, you it, wouldn't think about it. No, and, and it's really not that difficult to do. Right. It's actually really easy to do. Mm -hmm. So we've... Um, well, and, and one of the things, too, is, is um, and this was some of the stuff that we're talking about today, we could 
we did talk about last week and some we could have talked about last week, but we're going to do it today. One of them, we, we did talk about the lightning bugs, mm-hmm. you know, that working together, they're much more successful in, in, in things. Another one that I, that I missed last week when we talked about it was if, if a person is looking at a hill, the hill is 10 to 20% steeper if they're by themselves. Right. It's just a perspective thing. But if there's somebody with us, it's easier. So this whole concept of being helpful and doing things for other people dramatically has, has benefits for us. Um, in in a, a podcast I was listening to um, before, uh, earlier today, and, and actually it's got a book that, that I can't wait, with, that I just dropped as people heard it <laughs> at the floor, that I, that I can't wait to read. Um, there in Flint, Michigan, this is a book by Sean Acor called uh, Big Potential. And, um, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, he, he references a group of educators in Flint, Michigan. Now we know that Flint's had a really tough stretch. First, they had the, the collapse of the automotive market. It's come back some, but, but not nearly to what it, it will never get back. I think to where it was in the, in the 50s, 60s and early Mm seventies. Um, but they've got the water issue where they can't drink the water because the water's contaminated. And I'm sure financially that the town is really struggling. So teachers just feel like their hands are tied at every turn. But to help them view their life more positively and and to feel more empowered, they would go out at 3.30 in the morning and give donuts to road crews. And they wanted to see how this these random acts of kindness type of things, like giving donuts to people. This actually gave them a feeling, an internal feeling of having more resources without even gaining any more. They just, they, they felt more resourced. They were happier. They were more, they were more positive, more focused on doing good by simply doing it, random acts of kindness. It, right. it benefits us. So having that abundance mindset. Exactly, an abundance mindset mm-hmm. versus a scarcity mindset. Right. So we have had, and I know we'll talk more about this when, when we do a set, when I do an interview with with Julianne, when you're mm-hmm. out on maternity leave. But tell us, what are some new things that Macney's doing? That really, I mean, I've been involved with Macney for a long time. We never did until, um, you younger folks came on board and kind of woke us up. Yeah. So I mean, I think so in, what are in we the, doing different? In the last nine months, we um. You know, Julianne really invigorated Macney and in, in, in with this, um, and she she really helped us get our our act together on giving back to our community. And so, in the last nine That's months, awesome. we have done a diaper drive to support the um, CNY Diaper Bank, where we, that was just our our employees. I think we ended up collecting about 2,000 diapers to be distributed to babies in need um, in the Syracuse area. We volunteered time with the diaper bank as well to help get those diapers wrapped and packaged for the families. Mm -hmm. Um, We did a food drive with our post-holiday party that just, like, Completely shattered my expectations. I mean, our membership yeah. was so, so generous. And I remember when... And you know... Go ahead. One of the... Marissa, one of the, one of the, the amazing things about that was... Because part, part of that evening, I was in that room where they, where they came in, they signed in, and they dropped off the food. Mm-hmm. People that came in with bags of food just were beaming. Yeah. Their, they, their, their smiles were so infectious. They had a positive mindset. Mm-hmm. Because they knew they were doing something good. Right, that helper's high that you know, we mentioned. Exactly, that helper's high. It was just, yeah. it was so neat to see. So yeah. go ahead, and, and I know you got more examples there, I'm sure. Yep, we have um, we did a staff-wide um, volunteer session at the Samaritan Center. So some, yep. some of our staff members were able to take some time out of an afternoon to go volunteer with the Samaritan Center and we're gonna do that again right we're um, doing that again this month this month be- yeah because i was unable to attend but yep and then um one thing that is actually going on right now as as this episode airs is that we are doing a um a membership wide school supply drive um, to benefit hillside and yeah so oh, that's great. for the last month we've been collecting school supplies 
for, um, you know, we want, we really want to help set up our future and our students are our future. Right. And how can we yes. send them off onto, into a new school year prepared and ready to learn and taking, take some of the stress off them and their families. So we thought a school supply drive would be a great way to do that. And like I said, we've been doing that for the last month. We've been collecting donations um, from our employees and from our membership. We've got members who are doing their own kind of mini drives at their locations that will then contribute to our drive. And then it'll all conclude um, a week from now on August 15th at our clam bake. So we have a huge clam bake every Great. year at Hinner Waddles. And that'll be kind of the the grand finale where we're hoping that, you know, everyone who comes to the clam bake, if they haven't already dropped off a donation to our office, um, that they can just bring their school supply donations with them to the event when, um, right when they get there, there will be a table that um, actually Hillside will be joining us at the event to collect the donations and, and thank our membership. Um, you can drop them off while you, while you're on your way into the clam bake, um, you know, prior to having a good time. So sure. Um, that, it, you know, if you haven't considered doing that yet, you still have a week to do it. So hopefully some, we'll get That's some awesome. of our, uh, our listeners interested there, but, um, it's, it does, it just feels so good. Um, and I know when, when we're able to, um, to pack up, you know, when, when Hillside leaves on that day with a van full of school supplies, it just, it's really a great feeling. It is, you know, and mm -hmm. that's just, that's just awesome. It reminded me when you were talking about that, it reminded me of a, a time when I was at Self Lock. Um, and it was right after, and maybe I mentioned it on a podcast, I'm not sure or not, but uh, we had come, it was right after the the recession had hit in 2007, 2008. I forgot what year it, it was hitting us the worst. Maybe it was 2008. Um, and we went through a very difficult time with the company. Um, we went from four days, five days a week to four days a week to three days a week. And then, Right after the new year, I had to, I, I just couldn't function like that. So I ended up having a fairly big layoff, um, about a third of our employees. But within probably six weeks, I brought everybody back because things had started to turn for us rather mm -hmm. quickly. Um, and, and, and the reality, so we, we got toward the, the September part of the year, and that's when we always would kick off our United Way campaign. And I remember wondering, and I would do it with like a, a pizza luncheon, and, and we we do a lot of fun. We always tried to do the step up challenge, and we encourage. And of the 18 years I was at Self Lock, only two years did we not have 100% participation. So our employees were amazing mm -hmm. in doing that. Um, but in this specific year, we, we did have 100%. But I thought, this is real, we're going to take a hit because these people just aren't going to, you know, their their wages were frozen. They had some un unemployment time and and it was interesting um we, i'm standing up having the meeting kicking it off trying to you know put the best face be the best inspiration kind of person i can inspirational leader to our team and and one of our my coworkers um speaks up marcia and she speaks up and she says may i say something please i said sure and and Marsha was one of those people I, I loved having Marsha work for me. She you never knew what she was going to say because she was going <laughs> to speak her mind, and you had to be prepared to take it from her. But still, just a a, a dear dear woman. Um, she said, uh, "Guys, we need to step it up this year." And I'm like, "Okay, where's this going?" She goes, "We're all working. A lot of people in our industry don't have any jobs, mm -hmm. and maybe their unemployment's running out. So we need to dig deep." And that year, our hourly employees increased their giving 28%. Wow. And it blew me away. 28% in a year. Now, I knew this, but they didn't. But I was going to give make up for their, their frozen wages because we ended up having a good year mm -hmm. um, with some bonuses at, around Thanksgiving because we always paid out bonuses between Thanksgiving and Christmas. But my, my point there is not only did they increase their giving 28%, but the mindset in the company with the employees shifted and the next fiscal year was our record year for earnings. Our profits went through the roof the next year. And I really believe it was because the employees were gay engaged. They were trying to find ways to solve issues and solve problems. Um, and this wasn't being in a new building. We were still in our old factory, you know, in East Syracuse. Uh, but they just believed and when i you know i think when i could say to them hey you folks increased your giving 28 percent 
And that I think that whole mindset worked its way through the company and it even helped the bottom line of the company dramatically. Mm -hmm. We, in, in my years there, we never had earnings like that before or after. And I think it's just that the folks were focused on other people, not themselves. Right. And, and it's that beautiful, rewarding thing of, you know, serotonin, dopamine being released in our brains. We want, we feel good. And, and we all know when we feel good, when we go to work and we feel good, we're more productive. We're mm -hmm. more creative. We're more engaged. When we go home, and, you know, so my encouragement to, to not just our companies, but with your families, what are you doing to make Central New York better? Where are you volunteering? You know, are you, and, and a lot of times people don't know how good they have it till they see how others live. Mm-hmm. And for me, that's always an important thing. You know, take your kids somewhere, volunteer at a soup kitchen and find out how good you really have it. Um, because most of, us, most of us don't have a clue until mm -hmm. we, we, we actually go to those places and see those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I also shared with you before we started recording of that my dad had a friend years ago uh, before we even moved to Syracuse. It was before I was even born. And, and this woman had problems where she battled depression. And this would have been like, I was born in 61. So this would have been like the late 50s, 1960, where they didn't have the medication that they have today. Nor did it, do I think they had the clinical understanding of, of the illness that, that, you know, clinical depression is. And, and I, and, but this woman was really, really burdened with her, her, um, depression and, and she came to my dad because she knew he was a person of faith and she wanted him to pray with her and he did and and he said to me years later he, he told me the story of this woman and he's I said so whatever happened to her he said well the interesting thing was she moved away and I would get these letters about you know this poor depressed woman this poor and all of a sudden one of the letters said I met a retired lawyer who's going blind and I'm going to read to him on a regular basis. And my dad said that was the last time he ever got a depressing letter from her. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not telling people that are battling clinical depression, you know, stop going, stop taking your meds and just go volunteer. But I am saying that for this woman, whatever her clinical diagnosis was or wasn't, we know she was depressed when she started doing something for other people, it took her mindset off herself and onto others. And my guess is her brain started releasing things like serotonin and dopamine. Right. And she felt great. Mm -hmm. So I wonder, is there, so we've talked about volunteering and doing things for people outside of work. Is there a way that we can use the same thing inside of work right. like are there mm -hmm. things that we can do to volunteer and help each other i mean last week we talked about being an ins you know a, an inspiration point so to speak for people encouraging people but could there be other things we could do and i'm just thinking out loud within our mm -hmm. office or our factories to be more helpful to people right well, I mean, I think, I think just encouraging people, um, helping them recognize some of their strengths that they may not see, mm. um, or even, you Love know, it. think about the, the people that you interact with even outside your office too, um, whether they be vendors or customers, members, um, whoever you come in contact with, like, how can you help them too? You know, like if they're doing a great sure. job with something, tell them. Uh, you yes. know, oftentimes we only deliver bad news or, you know, share negative feedback, share positive feedback, encourage people to do the things that they're good at. Um, because I think it, it really does make a difference. I mean, especially people you work with because you, you do spend so much time with them. So if you notice like, Hey, you're really creative and maybe they aren't in a position where they get to always exercise that but maybe there's an opportunity on a special project for them to to yeah, exercise that. that creative part of their brain and um you know assuming that it fits into their workload and that their supervisor is okay with it um it gives them an opportunity to shine in a different place and i think not only would that benefit 
you um, because you're, you know, doing, you're inspiring someone, but that person will have an opportunity right. to do something that they're good at, which means they probably like it. And exactly. And it, again, it, we talked about this last week. It just continues to to improve the organization. Right. Right. You know, I I heard um on a podcast where one company where this it's it's like how do you be alive? I think that another guy wrote a book called Alive at Work or something like that, mm -hmm. and it literally was organizations that let employees take let's say two or three hours every couple of weeks to work on something they love. Right. And that companies have developed things, employees have developed things that the company never thought was possible. Mm -hmm. because they let people work in their gifted areas and just work on things that they love doing. And, and I love that where how you, you, you talked about, you know, um, just recognizing brilliance mm -hmm. or giftedness in somebody and then encouraging them. You know, so we're doing this stuff at work. And so not only will we get this, this reverse inspiration when we see them enjoying it, but our companies are going to benefit from it. Right. You know, so even though we may, you know, some may say, well, this is just some um, idealistic, whatever. No, this is this is a capitalistic approach as well, where it helps our companies. It drives revenue. I know it did itself like that year when when our employees stepped up big time. We again, we had the most profitable year in our history in terms of, you know, earn earnings per sales dollar. Mm hmm. And I think it was because their minds and their, their hearts were unleashed, so to speak. Right. And they could come up with crazy things, crazy ways to do things. Mm -hmm. So the goal, my, my goal in writing this was to just encourage people, go out, be that person that lights up other people's lives, so to speak. And you're going you're gonna to get blessed so much. You're, you're, you're just going to feel amazing for doing it. Mm-hmm. And that really kind of moves us that we've talked in the past about the difference between success and significance. I think that's it. Right. We feel so good because we know we made a difference in somebody's life. And and just think about that too, those statistics I gave, a 44% less chance of dying, which again, everybody has a 100% chance they're going to die at some point. <laughs> but for 55 people, 55 and up, who volunteered were 40, had a 44% lower likelihood of dying that percentage was greater than those who exercise, greater likelihood of prolonging their life than if they exercise four times a week. Amazing. And that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I, I won't even ask you about food. No. <laughs> I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you get through the pregnancy, <laughs> let the weather cool, then I'll talk about food again. And I don't even have any good food examples right now. <laughs> well, so. how about I'll ask you a question. Do you know what, what we'll be talking about next week? I don't. I have an idea, but I'm not ready to release it yet. All so. right. Well, I'll wait. How's that? That's fine. Okay. So we'll, we'll wait. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you. You too. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was the next page.